Another protest, one here in Illinois, but instead of a crowd of college students, only one person is involved. The protester wants more money for the State Department of Children and Family Services, which provides care to abused, neglected, and abandoned children in Illinois. The man in the white hat is a man with a cause. He's Hector Viafan, a DCFS administrator who's sick and tired of foster kids suffering because the state doesn't provide adequate funds to properly take care of them. So Hector Viafon is taking two weeks of his vacation time and is walking 210 miles to Springfield to bring attention to the lack of funding for DCFS. I do not blame the department. I blame those who legislated us into existence and have not funded us. They are the ones, not the workers in DCFS, they are the ones that have to step forward and say, hey, we gave you a game plan. We told you to paint us a rainbow and only gave you one color and no brushes. One of Viafon's major concerns, the warehousing of children in the emergency service center. Currently, 39 kids are being housed here at Cuneo Hospital. Most have been sleeping on the floor for days. There are no services for these kids. There are no foster homes to place them in. There's no need for that. We should have resources out here in this country, the richest country in the world, okay, to provide some stabilization for these children. Viafon is also asking people to sign his petition of support so he can present the signatures to lawmakers when their new session begins. And he's challenging all elected officials to pitch in and help find foster parents. Find me six licensable resources in your district and then work with them throughout the years, okay, so that you keep a pulse of what's happening. Viafon says he's overweight, out of shape, and has arthritis, but that's not going to stop him. And he says any elected officials who want to walk a mile for him just join the crusade to fund our programs. Peter Carl, Channel 5 News. Hector Viafon expects to reach Springfield, Illinois, in about 12 days. Jesse Jackson lives in Chicago, but he was born in South Carolina, and he's in South Carolina today, drumming up support for tomorrow's Democratic caucuses there. Paul Hogan is here in Chicago for a look at uh, Jackson's populist campaign this time around. Right, Ron. Well, like all the other candidates, Jackson has one stump speech that he repeats over and over again as he campaigns across Illinois and the nation. Unlike the other candidates, Jackson does not hedge his points. He makes a dramatic presentation filled with anecdotes. It's a populist appeal and, without a doubt, the most liberal platform of any Democrat. We, the people... He begins almost every stump speech with the first three words of the U.S. Constitution, and sometimes he ends it that way. The working poor, victims of economic violence. His main theme is what he calls economic justice, raising the minimum wage, guaranteeing women get equal pay for comparable work, providing daycare, and ending what he calls corporate violence that's fostered by merger maniacs. He calls executives at GE, IBM, and Chrysler barracudas who lay off American workers for cheap labor overseas, men dumber than honeybees. Even honeybees. Brainless honeybees. Drop pollen where they pick up nectar. So to regenerate the flower. If American corporations get their nectar from America and then sow their pollen in South Africa, Taiwan, South Korea, they kill the flower and don't have as much sense as a honeybee. Jackson's second theme is stopping drugs by boosting the Coast Guard budget and hard-nosed diplomatic and economic attacks on what he calls the fascist drug lords of Latin America. It's not some alien ideology that threatens us today. It's drugs, it's coke, it's crack, it's heroin. Jackson and scores President Reagan for cutting the Coast Guard players. budget, which hampers the interception of drug shipments. I begin to raise the issue again. They say, well, you're making a mistake. We didn't cut the Coast Guard budget. The Congress cut the Coast Guard budget. I said, but you fought for country aid. You didn't fight for Coast Guard aid. But it's hard to get the Congress to support us. I said, well, you should have just said no. Jackson also explains why he should be elected, even though he's never held public or administrative office. He points to his leadership role in civil rights, his successes negotiating with corporations and governments, and his role as a motivator of youth. I know the American people better than my competitors. Well, he calls it the campaign of hope. He sees each one of his planks as a patch in a quilt. A quilt that, taken all together, includes a majority of Americans. So far, most Democrats who voted 2.54 million 
Agree. Thank you, Paul. As we say goodnight to you this evening, we leave you with images of Illinois and politicking in Illinois. Good night. The endless skyway I saw below me The golden valley Well, this land was made for you and me I roamed and rambled I followed my footsteps 